How are you going? Welcome to Ben's Lab. I'm Ben, your host. It's good to see you today. Now, the coolest thing about space, apart from the fact that uh, all the coolest TV shows are set out there, obviously, is that it's just really, really weird. Today, I'm going to show you Neutron Stars. They are really, really hardcore. If you ever get a chance to visit a Neutron Star, don't. What do you do? Just sit back, let me do all the work, and take you for a little ride across a Neutron Star. You're gonna love it. This here is our sun. It's big. Really, really big. How big? Well, it's by far the biggest thing in the solar system. So big, it can swallow up to 330,000 Earths. Now, our sun is a G-type main sequence star. It formed, like most stars do, by condensing from the gravitational collapse of a dust and gas within a molecular cloud billions of years ago. These clouds are known as stellar nurseries, and they're all over the universe, pumping out newborn stars all the time. And time has been rolling on. The sun's been around for around four and a half billion years, creating heat and light with stellar fusion. Right now, it's about halfway through its life cycle. The sun is undergoing fusion, burning hydrogen atoms, fusing them together to form helium. Eventually, the sun will run out of hydrogen, then it will begin fusing heavier elements, one by one. One day, in the distant future, the sun will eventually run out of fuel to burn with, reaching iron, which requires more energy to burn than it produces. When this happens, boom, a supernova. Neutron stars are the fragment of stellar core remaining, with star between five and eight times the mass of our sun has sent much of its outer layers into space. All right, so, neutron stars, huh? Well, it turns out that these are supernova. Our explosions are happening all the time out in the universe, uh, leaving all kinds of mess, which the universe puts to good use, uh, creating more stars and planets. But uh, is that all that happens? Depending on the size of the star, you can leave behind one of two things. A black hole or a neutron star. So again, why neutron stars? Why are they called that? Well, let's take a look at atoms again. This one here is one of about 10 to the 82 atoms in the universe. That's a 10 with 82 zeros behind it. Lot. Now, arising from the Big Bang, three basic subatomic particles. You've got your protons here with a positive charge, neutrons here which have no charge, and last but not least, electrons which have a negative charge. Now, an atom will arrange itself as thus. Our top nucleus consists of protons and neutrons tightly bound together. As you can see here. And around it we're visiting a shell or cloud of electrons. Oh. Alright, uh, catch you later. See you, Ben. Uh, yeah, see you, Ben. Have a good one. Uh, thanks for your help. What was with the hat anyway? Okay, so I've gone into atomic structure a little bit, fair enough. But uh, what I haven't explained is that uh, atoms are pretty much almost entirely empty space. And uh, if the nucleus of an atom were, say, the size of like a soccer ball, uh, the nearest electron would be about two kilometers away. Putting it another way, if you took the space from all the atoms uh, in all the human beings on the planet Earth uh, and condensed them all, you'd end up with a lump of matter about the size of this nut here. Now, obviously stars are made of atoms just like us. If we go back to the supernova, for most of its life, a star is caught between exploding and imploding. There's a balance between the outward push of fusion from within and the inward pull of the star's gravity. And fusion eventually stops, as explained earlier, the star implodes, crushed by its own gravity. The neutron star forms the star's gravity is immense, so immense that the atoms in the leftover core are compressed, compressed so much that protons and electrons are squeezed together, getting all smushed up and forming neutrons. This leaves behind an object 
which is basically composed almost entirely of neutrons. So how big is this object, this new star? Our sun is, as explained earlier, quite big. A neutron star is the leftover remains of a star somewhat larger than our own. But after the supernova that formed this neutron star, there's still plenty of star stuff left, about 1.8 solar masses worth. So, it stands the reason then that this neutron star is pretty big. Well, let's take a look. Here's the island nation of Curacao, north of the Venezuelan coast. It's one of the world's smallest nations with an area of 444 square kilometers. Were a neutron star to somehow plummet from the sky and land on Curacao, it would cover a decent piece of Willemstad, the capital city of Curacao. That's right, a large neutron star is probably about 20 kilometers across. Now, that doesn't sound so crazy, but really, if a neutron star were to suddenly appear over Willemstad, or any city on Earth for that matter, all life on this planet would instantly have been annihilated before I could finish this sentence. The fact that a neutron star consists of nearly twice as much matter as our sun, squeezed into something we could walk across in about an hour or so, means that it's extremely dense. How dense? Well, let me show you. How dense was it again? I just happen to have this uh, canister of imaginary neutron star stuff here. Okay, get some out. One teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh 20 billion tons. Or well, weight of a mountain. <sighs> My arm was getting tired. <laughs> Eat your heart up, Superman. It's time for more backyard astrophysics. On a neutron star, gravity is 2 billion times that of Earth. Were I to drop this hat from a height of 1 meter above the surface of a neutron star, it wouldn't even have made it to the surface. It would have instantly reached a speed of about 1.4 thousand kilometers per second squared and would have been vaporized, along with me most likely. This is because on a neutron star, acceleration due to gravity is a staggering 1.86 times 10 to 12 meters per second squared or to rephrase it, 1.86 trillion meters per second squared. Compare that to Earth, which has a gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Bit of a difference. Anyway, let's go back to work. I wouldn't be here either, trust me. I would have been literally vaporized by the star's gravity in an instant. Not to mention the star's surface temperature, which is about 1.8 million degrees Celsius. Woo! Compare that to about 5,500 degrees for the surface of our own sun. Now, a day on Earth is slightly less than 24 hours, about 23 hours and 56 minutes to be precise. On a neutron star, the spin is fast, incredibly fast. In fact, neutron stars have been observed that have been clocked at 716 rotations a second, or 43,000 revolutions a minute. Okay, so how is this possible? To explain, I need to introduce you to a basic concept in physics called conservation of angular momentum. And here is a demonstration. This is pretty much what's happening with a newly forming neutron star. Much of the mass is remaining, but the radius is drastically decreased, resulting in an insane rate of spin as the energy of rotation is conserved. So obviously, uh, in reality, to be anywhere near the star is kind of impossible, right? I mean, you've got uh, off the charge gravity, you've got the temperatures that make a star look chilly, uh, and you've got a rotation at the surface that pretty much defies belief. I mean, if I was standing on the surface, which is basically the star's atmosphere, technically speaking, uh, I'd be moving at about 15% of the speed of light. So anyway, I've been uh, waltzing around on this star, uh, protected by the magic of cheap special effects. But if I wanted to get out of here and go home, I'd need to achieve an escape velocity of about uh, 
one third to a half of the speed of light, which as we all know is So what does the star itself? I mean, I'm standing on its atmosphere, right? Pretty much. Um, well, the atmosphere is actually a uh, shell of probably iron, a few millimeters thick. And um, there are mountains here, believe it or not. Uh, they're situated at the star's poles. Caused by like a, a squeezing or bulging from rotational and tidal forces. So um, let's go check them out. So because gravity is just plain silly here, uh, I just step over them. They're only about a centimetre tall. Really. Top of the world, Ma! So, what's going on inside this star? Matter is so pounded and pulverised that it's becoming something called degenerate matter, a kind of messy plasma of weirdness that I, as a non physicist, am not going to embarrass myself by trying to explain. Uh, but as uh, J.R. Tolkien uh, so eloquently put it, it's the unexplained vistas that make this universe uh, so gosh darn interesting. So uh, I'll put it to you. Um, what's inside of the useful star? I'd like to know. Uh, anybody with uh, a slightly more expert uh, view on things? I'm glad to hear it. So, by the way, what were those weird clicking noises we heard at the start of this video? They're the electromagnetic noise made by neutron stars calling out across the universe and being heard by radio telescopes across the world. So anyway, uh, that's the end of another show. Uh, once again, I've had a great time making this and uh, learning about neutron stars. They're fantastic. Um, I've learned a whole pile of other things too. It's an incredible universe out there and I hope you're uh, feeling the same way and, uh, you know, are as enthused about all this as I am. And if you like what you see, uh, you know, like the video, um, send in comments, suggestions, uh, share it with your friends, uh, subscribe, more important, and turn on notifications uh, if so you can get the more Ben's Lab action. So um, until next time, I'll uh, see you later and have a good one.